there are an elite few sports bettors that can actually beat the sports books. But how do most sports books respond to winners? It's not pretty. And I'm going to explain it in this video. Hi, I'm Jack from unabated.com. I've been a professional better for over 20 years. I've seen sports betting grow and now boom across most of the US, but it's still often misunderstood and largely misrepresented. I'm not here making picks. I'm here to help you with your process of becoming a sharper better. Now, when legal regulated sports betting came to my state, New Jersey, I was extremely excited. In fact, that's me cashing the first winning sports wager in Atlantic City's history. A couple of months later, in August 2018, the first online sports books opened in the state. I was amazed at the large amount of wagers that were offered. For instance, I could bet not only whether there would be a run in the first inning of a baseball game, but I could bet whether there would be a run scored in the second inning, third inning, any inning. I opened an account at DraftKings and I was betting a lot of yes in the first inning, no in the second inning. However, just a couple of weeks later, I found that I could no longer bet $500 units on these bets. The software wouldn't let me bet more than just about $100. And then a few days later, it was restricted even further down to $36 or so. Suddenly, my big money dreams of beating first and second innings were shattered. Now, sportsbooks exist for one reason, to take your money. And not surprisingly, most sportsbooks don't like players who can beat them. So what do they do? They make it harder for winning players to bet with them. This is often accomplished by either outright rejecting the wagers attempted by sharp bettors or imposing limits as to how much they'll accept from a sharp better. But how does a sportsbook know who's sharp and who's not? You could judge by win-loss, but that's not very exact. You can get very lucky and you can also get very unlucky. Taking an approach based on just the amount of money the customer has won doesn't give a good profile. Instead, sportsbooks often profile based on CLV, closing line value. Now, closing line value assumes that if markets tend towards efficiency, then the most efficient price of a wager would be when the line closes or when the game begins. If you got a better price than the closing line, you're said to have positive closing line value. Conversely, if the market moved against you, you would have negative closing line value. Sportsbooks look for players who have positive closing line value as an indicator that they know what they're doing. Another way they identify sharp bettors is by watching their betting tendencies. Now, how you bet is a big indication of whether you know what you're doing. For instance, a recreational better tends to love betting on seeing things happen. They're more likely to bet overs because of that. Sharp bettors, conversely, tend to find value in unders and underdogs. Sharp bettors also typically avoid bets in a sports book that have a high house edge. They often avoid betting parlays or, or futures bets. Sharp bettors also look for the best line on a game before making a wager. And if a sports book notices that a better is only betting there when they have the best line, it's a good indication that that better may be sharp. So once a sports book identifies you as a sharp better, the most common counteraction that they take against you is to lower your limits. Now, if you go to a casino and you're looking to play a game like blackjack, there's often a sign on the table that tells you what the minimum and maximum bet limits are. Oddly, in most sports books, they don't have the max bet limit listed. It's determined player by player. So if a player is bad at sports betting, well, they'll take as high a bet as that player wants to give them. However, if a player is good at sports betting, the limits come crashing down. As I mentioned earlier in my experience with DraftKings, I was betting $500 on these second inning lines, only to one day find that my limits were suddenly much lower. I kept betting even though I was at reduced limits and they lowered them even further. Now, the remarkable thing about these limits is that they extended across all sports and all bets I wanted to make. For instance, when the NFL season started that year, my limit on betting on who would win an NFL game was less than $100. Now, while I may have some skill in projecting whether a run will be scored in a certain inning of a baseball game, I don't have the skill to beat NFL sides in totals with anywhere close to the same level of success. They were even going to limit me if I wanted to bet on the coin toss in the Super Bowl. Now that's a bet I couldn't possibly have an edge on, but they tried to limit me. 
This is the first example of how sportsbooks can shoot themselves in the foot when imposing limits. They use blanket limits on every bet type for a better that shows an ounce of skill. Nobody can beat every sport, so to limit a better on every sport seems short-sighted. Another faulty thing that sportsbooks do is to read too much into that closing line value. For instance, I knew a player who was a huge Yankees fan. He'd bet the Yankees every day. And at the start of the 2019 season, sports betting was new in his state. The Yankees had a formidable lineup and they opened the season against the then lowly Baltimore Orioles. Each day, as early as he could, he'd bet on the Yankees to win, often laying big odds. As the day went on, the line on the Yankees got bet into by everyone else. So the first three days of the season, the line on the Yankees steamed upward, and as a result, he got significant closing line value. On the fourth day, he found himself limited to just $50 on any baseball betting at that sports book. You see, they mistook his Yankees fandom as something sharp. In reality, it was anything but sharp, but the sports book read too much into the closing line value. Then there are the rare sports books that actually invite sharp action. To them, sharp action is a signal. It tells them which side the sharps are on, and they can encourage action on the side of the game opposite the sharps. Let's call that the square side. By doing this, they can increase their profits. These sports books pay for the information. The expected loss they have booking a sharp better is counterbalanced by the information they get from the sharp better. Now, ironically enough, these sports books often have posted limits that apply to all the bettors evenly. They don't need to play the limiting game. Now, if you think trying to win at sports betting sounds dreary, you have to realize that there is a game within the game for many sharp bettors. I often like to say that there's the science of sports betting and the art of sports betting. Now, the science is much easier than practicing the art. You can find lines to beat at almost any sports book. However, being able to get the money down and last long enough to realize your profits is much harder. Let's discuss ways sharp bettors get around limits. First, in most of the US, the popular way to place a wager is via an app. However, in doing so, the sportsbook knows your name and all of your information. Some sharps prefer to actually bet in person to be more anonymous, especially if you bet at the counter on different shifts or at different sportsbooks. However, even then, the sportsbook may start to recognize your face over time. Some sharp bettors sneak in their bets at automated kiosks in the sportsbook. Sportsbooks typically take lower limits at these automated kiosks. However, the better often has the ability to rebet anonymously at a different kiosk after making their original wager. The other way sharps overcome betting limits is to bet through other people. Now, the legality of betting through someone else varies based on the approach used. Sharp bettors are always going to find creative ways to get back into the sports book, even when the sports book indicates they don't want their action. So in the battle between winning sports bettors and the sports books, limiting and rejecting bets is the most effective weapon the sports book has. Knowing what they are looking for and how to avoid detection can give the sharp better a longer life at the sports book. Do you need more proof that sports books can be beaten? Well, let me show you in one of the videos listed here on the screen. There's a big world of sports betting knowledge out there. Let's explore it.